If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 20 minutes, me, Adam, and Justin have some nice conversation. We talk about podcasting tricks. <laughs> Those shucksters. <laughs> what are these guys up to? Yeah, what are they doing? Uh, things uh, we talked about our significant others uh, listening to Mind Pump, what they're critical of, how Justin's wife doesn't like the show. <laughs> <laughs> I never said she didn't like it. She just doesn't listen. The only edit we ever did was when Sal talked about uh, Jessica. It, stop. <laughs> then we talk about the Shows weird the kids in the car. The weird virtual world. Uh, you're going to have to listen to this episode to know what I'm talking about there. And then we mentioned. The Organifi Green Juice. Because you're uh, chugging it right now because you're sick. Yeah, yeah, I got a little sick. Caught it from Adam. Oh, Should have known better not to make out with him. Out. Uh, if you want a discount on Organifi, go to OrganifiShop.com. Type in the code MINDPUMP for 20% off. Then we get into the questions. The first question was, do we ever freak out about aging? <sighs> Is that something we're I'm worried rocking, about? I'm rocking the grays. He's handsomer today than he was yesterday. I'm rocking it. Then we talk about whether what kind of advice would we give ourselves back in the day before we started working out? Like, what's the one piece of advice if we could deliver to our younger selves in regards to fitness? What would that be? Then we talk about how we could fix the public school system in regards to health. Of course, dear God, help don't, us! Don't forget, <laughs> Mind Pump has all the answers to everything. <laughs> if only we had that kind of power. And finally, we talk about some of our weaknesses that we started with that have now become our strengths. Now we're left with no more weaknesses. To the, consider, we're talking about the business, right? Yeah. That's right. We're just the, the, strengths uh, everywhere. And finally, two days left. Okay, these are the final two days to basically get something for free. Something. It's for reals. You get any program <laughs> or any something. bundle. Don't worry. You're going to get- It's like a surprise. You're going to get either Maps Prime for free, Maps Prime Pro for free, or mass performance for free. Depending it, on what you enroll in, whatever you don't have is what you can get for free. And it tells you on the website. It One of them is going to be a P. Uh, and that includes our super bundle. The super bundle is uh, our most popular program. Uh, it includes uh, all of our MAPS programs. It's a year's worth of exercise programming. So I said program like 10 times there. Yeah. Uh, so you'll start with like MAPS Anabolic, move into MAPS Performance, then MAPS Aesthetic. You've got MAPS Anywhere that you could do in between. There's Prime in there to help you prime your body. And you're going to get MAPS uh, Prime Pro thrown mm. in for free with that. It's the best value you can get. Uh, you can find out about all of this at mindpumpmedia.com. It's, it's been cool. a while since I offended anybody anyways. What was the last thing I offended people It's been on? at least 24 hours. No, it's been a long time. Been a while, when was the last time I ruffled enough feathers that people were like, oh, that was just oh, not cool? Adam. Yeah, let's, this is good. Let's think about this. Not really. When was the last time any I've of us- I've been pretty PC. Pissed, uh, who pisses hmm. off the most people? For sure me. You think you? I think so. Is it even close? Uh, I start a lot of sh fights. Yeah. I do start a lot of fights. Right. It's rare that somebody gets on our form because our form is normally our, our best pulse, right? So it's mm. rare that somebody gets on the form and actually points out something you said and says like, I can't believe you said this stuff. Oh, Although yeah. it's happened. Uh, mm. I, you know what? People try to debate me more. I think you're right. People just get pissed off at you. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. They like to- Actually, the only one that's ever- I've never gotten really hate mail. Have you? No. Oh, Justin has. Yeah. I, I get the girl- yeah, I have. You have got hate- yeah. He got hate mail. Did you really? Didn't yeah, because he said retard. Oh. Was that? Oh, did I? Remember that? I did. That was a long time ago. Yeah. That's right. You can't say that no, anymore. No, it wasn't me. That was Adam. Oh, Adam said it. But I, they, damn but it. They, that wasn't me. <laughs> but they messaged you. <laughs> they messaged me about Adam. <laughs> I didn't fucking say that. <laughs> they were afraid, afraid to inbox uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to tell Adam to stop saying you know, offensive uh, things like that. Who I was does like, that? oh, what man. kind of retard doesn't know how to use a DM? Yeah, they, went, <laughs> they went around me. I was like, wait, did I say that? You, I can't, say, some you shit. can't say that word anymore. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's super offensive. We did early what? on. What? Yeah. I said that early on. Yeah. Uh, early, yeah. Early we were on. working stuff out. Come on. I was fucking. I was in, uh, well, it's hard to keep up with what you can and can't say. It's it, true. It happens yeah. too fast and now. Let's be Based on a tight and let's no. Go ahead. And we don't edit anything. Yeah. yeah right. I, did you see me? I defended you today when somebody was trying to get you about something you said. Like they what were. What did I say? You gave it. You fucked up an analogy. Oh, did I? Yeah. You fucked up an analogy, so somebody gave you shit. So of course I'm going to defend you. Oh, I, I said you could attract more flies with. With honey. Honey than you can with vinegar? Yeah, I don't know. Some yeah. you, you fucked it up, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? What is it supposed wow, to be? Wow, that's almost as good as ramp water. 
No. You're, <laughs> but yeah, hold on a second. I'm just kidding. You, yeah, I know. You, you know what I was trying to say. Yeah. Nobody knows what I you're know. trying to say. I know. <laughs> yeah, there is no, there is no, I don't even know a ramp analogy or a water you know, analogy. You know, no, I was making it up. It, you were. It, was, it didn't work. <laughs> you know? One day there's going to be like a major calamity. We're going to need to solve it with something, and that's going to be the answer. <laughs> You know uh, what I mean? One see. day I want sound. I just to be silent. Just let him keep working it out. Yeah. <laughs> just let him keep working this one out, right? Here. Justin's like an I, M. I do M that night. all the time. I'll you, do the same to you then. No problem. <laughs> you're like an M night. I just keep rolling. I just make the word up and keep shifting with it. Yeah. Just, uh, just keep shifting. Who's with me? Electronical or what, dude? Let's yeah, go. Right. Let's move, move it along now. That was a good one though. I, like, I don't ever remember what I how I used it. Electronic. I missed that one. I wish I would have heard that. Electronical needs to be a word. It does. Because if you, I still believe it is. I mean, it, 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 it does sound like what, you know, it, it is something, like, it's like, not. Like, hey, I'd like the, you know, you have two apps. So electronical. Can you get the electronical version or, or the manual one? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the <laughs> electronical <laughs> version. Yeah. Like, like hey, uh, I got the old old cars with the, you know, the wind-up windows. They're not electronical. Like yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> that works. Totally understand what uh, you're talking about right now. It does. Do you run on gas or is it electronic? Rarely ever do the words yeah. I make up not not make sense. They That's make true. sense. People are just mad because someone else didn't fucking, so because someone didn't put it in the Webster Dictionary. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Why can't I use yeah, that Yeah, why one? is Webster the one that decides that anyway? <laughs> yeah. Right? Damn. No, but somebody gave up. you crap about that. And I'm like, come on. You know what? We could be like every other podcast. And edit everything. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, everybody does. They do. We haven't met. We haven't yep. met a single. So I'm putting everybody on Front Street right now. We haven't mm. met a single podcaster that just rips and puts it out there. Mm -hmm. Nobody, yeah. no. right? You and here's some of the tricks. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some people out on blast right here. Not individually, just so the audience knows what's up. So a trick. Yeah, keep it between us. Audience. A trick. <laughs> just yeah. just Let's you guys just don't tell everybody. Anybody. So a podcasting trick, right? One of them is to obviously edit out all the ums just by editing out ums or the delay between like conversation back and forth or like when Justin were to go off on like a ramp and water analogy. That's like yeah. one thing. So we, you we would have cut that out. Or the other thing that's popular that people don't know they do is they speed it up just a fraction. Yeah. And when you speed it up just a, a fraction, fraction, some people speed it way the fuck well, up. Well, yeah, some people yeah. speed it way up, but just by speeding up a fraction makes you sound smarter. One hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So talking faster makes you sound smarter. Yeah, that's why yeah. I do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I talked normal, blaze through. <laughs> it's it is true though. We haven't. I can't think of a single. Do you, have we ever? Cut the only time out? we have ever cut, I can count on one hand. I know at least two times. I said somebody's name that I should. That's said, it. Yeah. And Doug has had to pull their name out. Yeah, we don't want people to get arrested or killed. Yeah, yeah. So that other than that, there's. I don't think there's ever been a time where. Did you ever do anything? Did you I've, never, I've never, that, oh, I've never. Oh, you know what? That I one time you said that thing about Jessica, Doug had to edit that out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, man. He's joking. Wow. Oh, he's joking. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh, no. Hey. Right? That one time you said something about Courtney. I remember that uh, one time. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter. She doesn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> I got that going for it's me. True. She, how, many, how many episodes do you think Courtney's actually listened to? Mm, maybe like uh, three. That's it. Maybe. Total. Yeah. She doesn't even know what Didn't you do. She, tell you? she doesn't even know what you do for a living. No, but she listens she to snippets even know what you... of it, but she's like, I get it. You know, like I've <laughs> heard like, you talk it. and I get it. You know, it's like, I don't need to like sit and listen to you. You know, I'm like, I get it too. Did she, did know? she tell you that? You, didn't she tell you when she first listened? Like, you're not funny. I listen to you all the time or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why I don't want her to listen. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's all the stuff. Like she she she'll just roll her eyes at me. You know what I mean? She critiques you afterwards. That was just like, I don't even know why Adam was laughing. That was funny. I'm embarrassed. Jessica, you know I mean? <laughs> Jessica listens to every episode and she's so like fanatical about it. In fact, that if I interrupt her while she's listening to it, she gets pissed. So and she stops it and she's like, I have to really? rewind it now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh. yes. Ka Katrina, that's so like a foreign animal. To no, me. that's Katrina the exact same way. I'll come in and if she's like in the middle of listening to Mind Pump and I'm like, oh, fuck, I I'll tell you what happened. Just mute it. Let's talk. You know so, so how many times has she like not liked me or Justin? Like, have we said something on the show? Where no, she's like, Those at, what's actually really funny is she never says anything about any, she is hypercritical of me. Mm. Yeah. She never, that's how it goes. she has never said anything that Sal could have been better about that or I can't believe Sal said this or Justin Wow went that it's always, God, you sound stupid. 
stupid today. No way. Yeah. No way. Ouch. I can't believe <laughs> my you. God. She's like, why does my man have to be sound like the bro? Like, you're not a fucking bro. No. Why do you? I'm like, I don't sound like a fucking bro. Like, yeah. she, so she gives me she gives me the most amount of shit for sure. Really? Yeah, oh, absolutely. She never says anything. There's nothing you guys ever say. You can't ever do anything wrong. Yeah. It's oh, always, really? Sweet. Oh, yeah. It's Thanks, always, Katrina. All right. Yeah, it's, always, it's always how I could have. And it's it's never like, it's never like, um, She's always critiquing like how I talk because I I told her I remember at the very beginning when we first started this, I definitely think that you know when, especially when I was competing and we're talking about macros and it was like I was one hundred percent embodying the the bro fucking of side of the business and I would always tell her I'm like well listen hun somebody has to talk about that stuff because people want to hear about we it we have to be popular well, <laughs> <laughs> I've learned this <laughs> right right so um, like let's be honest half things I'm into are not popular <laughs> I, I yeah. fucking know this yeah we can't do a whole episode on, on May spells yeah it's just let's not, talk about just it just nobody wants to hear it <laughs> huh? so crickets yeah and I'm like the other two guys they're fucking and at that time Sal was married I'm like you know Sal's married Justin's fucking married you guys both have kids I'm like they, <laughs> they're not going to talk about vagina somebody has to talk about vagina yeah. like this it, is it's so true. I yeah, mean, if we're going to be the Howard Stern of fitness, yeah. someone has to You're talk. You're carrying a lot of weight on your back. I was. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but now I feel like I, you know, there's a little bit more balance in the show. I don't have to talk about vagina yeah. as much. You know what? Yeah. I, if we are going to be self-critical, the, here's the one thing I, I hate hearing that we do, and we do less of it now. And we've talked about this, but What's I that? hate when we do this is when we have a guest on the oh, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we all like laugh at every fucking <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my god, you're so yeah. funny. I know. I do well, it's a, why are we flirting? It's with like that? a reaction. Well, though, it's a know? weird predicament to be in. Think about it, because we're first of all, we're all nice guys, yeah. right? But we and but we don't bullshit either. So, but there's this fine line. It's like having a guest at dinner at your you're house. You're trying to make them comfortable. Well, yeah, you're coming over and you're in our territory. Yeah. You're in our yeah. facility, right? And if you say things that maybe we don't fully agree with. Uh, I don't. I don't want to embarrass you or be a dick, right? So yeah. I feel like there's this. We kind of overcompensate. It's like we want know? that, like going into it, but it, like then we start to meet them, we're like, oh, they're just a person, you know? Like, oh, like I, like I want to like challenge them hard and check them hard, but right. you're just like, oh, let so them then we go the out. other direction. Yeah. So then we go the complete opposite. Like, oh, that was so funny. You yeah. said that. You're yeah. so great. Yeah. 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 They leave all happy. No. We're like, damn it. I catch yeah. it okay. when we. I catch it when we do it too, and I it annoys me. It annoys yeah. the heck out of me. Yeah. Yeah. And, but you know what though? I don't think it's we'll ever. At that. I don't think it's ever happened on a guest on a second time or a third time though. Like once, that's all I of our system now right like most people that yeah. will come yes. back on the show it's the first time we yeah do it's like yeah. the very it's just kind of courtesy like i'm not mm-hmm. gonna be i mean i'm sure the audience would love to hear the drama of like being a dick or being yeah. hard like but that's not how you make friends they also there's also this perception no. i'm starting to realize when guests first come here who, who know about us and listen to the show they think we're fucking gonna party hard. Like they come in, and yeah, like, yeah. Like they're like ready. I'm doing like, keg stands. Over yeah, here like, in the what's corner. gonna happen? We're like, the drugs. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're gonna actually uh, record a show. You know what? Oh, do some should, YouTube and uh, talk. We about should all walk out with just like powder all over our face and just be like, "Hey, <laughs> make welcome!" Look, make it look crazy. You know what we should start do? doing? Jumping jacks on the, along those lines is the next like, like super square fucking guest that we have. We should have like a pile of like flour or sugar a mirror yeah like a mirror, a mirror do a mirror and, and just, just do like cuts. a mound of like yeah. don't even say anything just a razor blade syringes out. right don't even say, don't even say anything <laughs> syringes Dude. Like and if we had Taylor pills. if we had Taylor hide a camera and dick over here and actually video the whole thing of the the guest yeah. coming in and you just leave it out there like it's no big deal you know what we'll do and no one say anything no, 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 no one say have anything. Rant, you know, we'll some do? random chick just we'll, walk out what we'll do is we'll cut up a line of like flour but put it like in front of their chair and we'll have them come sit down and we'll all leave and leave them in here with the camera and the light. See what, <laughs> <laughs> what if they go do it? They're just right? like, oh, like no, 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 it's making soda. Oh, I bet they got the good stuff. <laughs> Tell me that would not be a fun prank, though. That would it, be hilarious. It would be yeah. funny just to see see them like bring it up. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Did you get yeah, another wanna, scientist? Did you want to put yeah. this away? Yeah. Or they got all weirded out and yeah. just left? Just bury your face in it. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to do this? Listen, this is how you do it. Gah! Yeah. When they meet yeah. us and they realize we're just mostly business, we just sit down and... Yeah. And do mostly business. Yeah. Speak, yeah. Speaking business, of drugs, business. let me tell you something right now. Sudafed, Sudafed combined with uh, cannabis. Amazing. An interesting, uh, weird combination. I got the Sudafed because huh? I'm coming. I got a cold or something coming on. Thanks, Adam. Oh, sorry. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, I feel cold and uh, hot. Double up on your Organifi, what? bro. Green juice cold it up. And hot. This is what I So I had two servings already. Pound the green juice. Shiver and sweat. It actually, uh, that was pretty, normally I do all the emergency and, and be drinking like crazy like that, but I had, I was doing like three of those green juices with a big old thing of water and I, I, for the, I don't handle You were getting, only sick for two days. Yeah, I, I bounced back pretty fast. So 
I'm typically when I get sick, I'm a big baby. I'm knocked out, but I actually work still. I still did my thing, but I, this one's kind of weird. It's like you, it's really it makes you feel fatigued. I just don't like it. When I get sick, I get emotional. <coughs> I don't know about you guys, but I get weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? You guys don't get the, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you guys told me that. Cause like what Adam, you look through all like all our five star reviews and start reading that yeah. watching like uh, teen 16 and pregnant, group, like pregnancy. <laughs> so you get yeah. emotional too. Yeah. I don't eat what it is. Sentimental. Okay, the emotional. 16, the I get 16, like angry. The 16. I do have patterns and I've definitely picked up on them. The 16 and pregnant and the reading the reviews thing it has to be like a total pity party for myself I'm feeling sorry for myself 100% <laughs> is what it is right it only makes sense right it's like I need to read all these reviews that say nice things about me so yeah. that, that makes me feel better right? <laughs> and then I watch 16 and pregnant to watch these uh, loser kids that are having kids at 16 that you know what I'm saying that, I didn't know, do that when I was all feeling bummed out it, it fucking helps it does yeah. bro you feel good about uh, yourself it was, it was good like, if you next I, and I tell this to anybody who's listening right now the next time you feel really down and feel sick and depressed like go fucking watch 16 and are pregnant and read five star reviews about mm. yourself. If you, if you don't have any five star, <laughs> yeah, just go for it. You know I mean? If you don't have any yeah. five star reviews yeah. about yourself, have a friend write you. No, the last time I was sick, both my kids almost made me cry because I was on the couch and I was just fucking bummed out, feeling crappy. Mm. And they brought me a blanket. Both my kids brought me a blanket. Can we get you something to drink? And I was like, oh, what? Yeah. Look at this. Taking oh, care of daddy. Look at this. And then, and then, like, and then two minutes later, they yeah. ask for something. Can you buy yeah. me a... <laughs> right. Hey, yeah. Dad, I want this on Steam or whatever the fuck the thing my, my son uses for video games. Is your uh, kid into that yet? Not yet. How old is your oldest? He's seven. Seven? It's coming. It's coming. I it's know. It's coming soon, dude. What's coming? So it's called... All the video games. Yeah, stuff. but Steam, I guess, is the company you go through and you can buy like different things you can use in games or different games exactly i don't know what it is but if you go any okay if you go to the grocery store you know they have that section at the grocery store where they sell um gift cards so like you could go to you know applebee's or amazon or whatever God, they have one. these steam cards they're called steam and they're, they're gift cards so uh so that's what to give them things in the video game right? and that, in you the game how, or games do you understand how brilliant this is this yeah. is this is relatively new this is a cool topic so yeah I find this very fascinating and they, I can't remember what book I was reading that they got into this, but I know Justin and I went through this a little bit when we were uh, working on the app and like listening to developers, but the, like the poker, right? So poker makes uh, the, what's it called? The video poker, the free, right? No, mm -hmm. no, it doesn't charge you or anything like that. It's crazy how much money that makes because what they do is they start you off with, and I believe, and, and I think this is it's the freemium model. Right, right. Yeah. So you get $10,000 to play poker. And I love playing Texas Hold'em. So my buddies and I would play with that. Well, when you run out, okay, you have to wait, I want to say a day before you can start up again and get a new $10,000. Or you could purchase. Like right away, you could purchase half a million for like five dollars. Mm -hmm. So just to play, just to play, Jesus. Yeah, it's crazy. and you do it. Yeah. You buy it. Yeah, because you don't want to wait. You, do. you don't want to wait a day or well, two. It's this whole. It's so fucking this, smart. This whole economy around it, and I, yeah. I learned about. I they really get you hooked in it first. Well, it's like I, so these yeah. games. What they do with kids is like mm -hmm. so you can buy like either you can work through the levels and earn. The machine gun or earn the armor or earn the superpower to jump higher or whatever the fuck it is yeah. or you can buy these cards or things and, and they and then you jump past you, all yeah that. you jump past all yeah. that and you have, oh, so, so there's a whole there's a whole economy around it and a whole culture around it like here's something that happened to my son the other day he has items in this game that he plays like there's this particular guns and their value goes up based on the economy within the game. Mm. So it's not a set price. Oh, really? No. So you could find something and it'll be worth more money because more people want it type of deal. Ah, uh, I see. It's pretty crazy. Mm. So my son had this gun that was worth, he said it was worth 30 bucks. So they're applying scarcity and, and all that I in think there? so. And you can, trade, you can trade with other people. Mm -hmm. So then people are creating these fake accounts to scam other people uh. because, there's, because of the value of these fake items oh, so my wow. son got scammed he was so pissed he was so mad he got all he was all angry i'm like what's the matter buddy and he's like he didn't want to tell me finally he kind of broke down told me what happened he was going to trade his 30 dollar item for a different 30 dollar item that are, their both value was pretty equal to this other guy so he went to this guy's site and what he did is he the url address was just one letter off so it mm. looks the same he goes on there my son gives him his item doesn't get one in return totally gets scammed 
Wow. But, but there's people on there that do this. They steal or scam. He can, he can report that account and all he that. Did. Yeah. He did, but it happens so much. My, my yeah. son's like, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's gonna happen. Ah. So these guys go around scamming kids or whatever because these things have actual value. So and crazy. Nerd predators. And you'll sell them. And that's what the guy did. He went on the next day and he sold it. He sold it for actual money. What like a hustle. Real money. What a dick. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It, it's crazy that we get ourselves hooked into that, dude. That's so nuts we, to me. Talking about being in the virtual world, it's already happening where that's where the money, the oh, transfer, virtual everything. currency. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's there's there's also so I don't know if you guys know about this. I don't even know. This was a while ago when I was training this one client. It's like but second life and all. But that. there's virtual bars. Mm -hmm. There's a virtual bars that you can go online where you chat with people. You can buy them virtual drinks and gifts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And depending on the value of them, you'll get more attention. And you can. Well, have flirt. you seen that that second life game where you create your own persona, almost like World of Warcraft, but it's like I mean, it's like all like sexual and crazy. Like you like. I'm like a werewolf with this huge hog that's like <laughs> what? that's going around banging chicks. What? It, I swear to God, what check are you it into? out. What are you? What this is, this? is I watched this. This was on one of those shows like Taboo or one of those things, and they were exposing a lot of like what weird shit people are into. And this is like a huge community of people that are like creating this version of themselves. It's like this Online. fantasy character, and then they meet people and they you know they they like date and they talk like through and their characters have yeah sex. through chat or whatever and they're. They make their characters have sex. What? <laughs> it's hilarious. And fucking like really into it. And so, then... so the people who who argue that when we can when we can plug into the internet like our minds yeah. and go in there, people are like, oh, people won't do that. Yeah, they will. It's already happening. Dude. It's already fucking happening. Well, I think, and I definitely nobody's gonna want to live in the. This real gonna world. happen for sure. In yeah, like sports. centaurs banging. Fucking... We're not far away from like this full. Because sports is huge, right? We all know the NBA, NFL, soccer. I mean, that's fucking huge, right? I, this whole <clears throat> I, we're so close to having like cameras from all different angles all over the field, the the courts and everything. So you as a viewer can have any angle, any. And then I think the future will be mm -hmm. they'll have these little tiny cameras and their helmets. So you or, see where the quarterbacks so, looking at. So and all that I stuff, can yeah. like we sit down. We're gonna watch this Sunday's game, Niners versus we'll Cowboys. Already have that in and I'm gonna be Dak Prescott. You're gonna be you know mm -hmm. you're gonna be someone from the Niners, and you're gonna be you're gonna actually be. They're like, already the practicing line. with that. Yeah, it's ha it's gonna be like a, a, I'm know one of my one of my <laughs> friends. He was the quarter one of the quarterback coaches for Cal. He's not working there anymore, but uh, they were actually experimenting already with uh, VR, and they had. Um, you know, all the players wearing VR and then practicing with it and stuff. Dude, imagine a stadium, right? Imagine Trippy. going to a stadium where that's how it's going to be. Like everyone will have the goggles on. Nobody will be actually watching the live game. You'll have the goggles on because mark my words, bro. Yeah, it'll happen. In our lifetime, especially this is, on a so, Super Bowl, that's probably when they'll roll it out, bro. Right? Imagine that. And how then, sick would that be? And uh, imagine how interactive. You could not be more in the game than to actually be able to be the view, the view from the player that you like the most and yeah. you could change it whenever you want so i'd be like right now i want to be dak and yeah. watch what it's like from quarterback view and shit and, and they have all their own like like commercials and oh, shit for, right yeah, dude oh, just it'd be crazy just uh, it's gonna be a weird world it's gonna yeah. be dude it's right it's around the corner yeah. man it's, it's coming fast yeah. coming real fast is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. First up is from Roman Reboot. Do you guys ever freak out about aging? <laughs> <laughs> funny oh, we, no! Funny we bring this up. I was talking to a client of mine literally today about Botox, and she's been doing it for a long time. And I, and I, I was, I was just listening to her share it, but I was just thinking about how fascinating that is that we have these things that we can do now, right? And like uh, along the lines of what we're talking about right now, like what's the future like? You mm -hmm. know, what are we going to be able to do and stuff? The uh, the only <clears throat> thing that I freak out. <clears throat> that freaks me out about aging is uh, potential uh, disease or immobility. Right. That's really the only thing that worries me. Um, although <clears throat> that will eventually happen, no matter how healthy I am. I'm sure at some point, 
uh, you're going to lose mobility. You're going to lose, uh, you know, you, you may develop some, some health issues if you, if you're lucky enough to live long enough, by the way, that is a blessing. Um, I know people hate aging, um, but, uh, not everybody has the luxury of aging. Yeah. I've had, I've lost close people to, you know, to me who died young, who, I'm sure if they were given the option, would have loved to uh, be in a situation where they, you know, got to freak out about aging. You know, uh, the book "A New Earth" by Eckhart Tolle. Uh, I highly recommend it uh, to to people. <clears throat> in there, he talks a lot about uh, a lot of interesting things, and there's a lot of paradigm uh, shifting uh, topics. But one thing that he said that resonated very strongly to me was, you know, you're in your life, you're in this this life, this world. Uh, nothing you can change. You can't do anything about certain things like aging. Like there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to age. There's literally is nothing you can do about it. You can choose to fight it and hate it, or you can choose to embrace it and love it. That's really your two options. Mm-hmm. There is no other option. You can't stop it. We haven't. Well, you don't think there's a middle of that though. You don't think there's like a yeah, embrace it, the fact that it's happening, but then still do things that could benefit the or process, right? Well, that's what that's embracing it. Embracing it isn't. Embracing it doesn't mean I'm going to just like give up on life. Embracing it means this is what's happening and I'm just going to enjoy oh, I'm not well, going to hate myself. Okay, because I want to clarify that because I think yeah. it could sound like you just, oh, I'm getting old. Because some people say yeah. that too, right? Like, um, oh, uh, yeah. I'm like, getting old, so fuck it. Why you would start it? becoming more passive with all these things <clears throat> happening yeah, well, to you. I and, see my buddies are like yeah. this. Like yeah. my, my buddies are just, and you know they and they love to golf and fish. Nothing wrong with golfing and fishing. I joke with them all the time that it's like, hey, are we just like hanging it up? Like we're, fuck snowboarding, fuck wakeboarding, <laughs> fuck all the stuff that like is hard for us because we're older now. Like we're just going to stop that yeah. and then just hang it up. Like mm. to me, th- there's a difference between uh, being okay with aging and then just like full, you know, folding your cards or you know, giving up because it's hard yeah. or yeah. it takes more work well, now to stay right. younger looking, right? Yeah. Whatever. And that's the thing. Like we've been, <clears throat> especially modern Western societies, um, we look at age uh, in older people, and I put that in quotes because it's like anybody over the age of you know forty. We look at as uh, as not good. We don't want to look like that. Everything's got to be young. Everything's got to be youthful. But there's a lot of benefits to aging. There truly is. Wow. Like, like experience and wisdom. I'll tell you what right now. Like I personally, personally, I look forward to the entire aging process. For the most part, I don't think of it negatively. And mainly it's because I know how much I've grown. Like me today – Versus me ten years ago, versus me well, twenty years ago. You got a lot more like, to I say love- now. Yeah, I mean, it's like all this experience has amounted to like a better story and a better uh, conversation that you can pass on to people. Like I feel like everything was so self centered and self focused. Like as I was younger and growing up, and like I had all these like pursuits that were like very myopic. Where now it's like okay, I can I can consider a lot more things because it's like I've seen so much more and like. Yeah, I I have no fear at all about aging. It's just it's just like some of those health things that I really want to make sure like I maintain strength. I want to do these things that are harder for me. You know, I don't want to just uh, you know, start like scaling everything down and back and sitting more and, you know, being more passive about how things happen to me. I always want to be uh, you know, in the driver's seat. So mm-hmm. uh, I think that's just, that's, that's, yeah, the I'm, not, the I'm not, af- I'm not afraid of it at all. First of all, one, I think as a, as a male, I think we, most men tend to get a little bit better with age, even physically. I think, mo- I think most women would, <clears throat> would agree that uh, they're more attracted to a 30 uh, year old man than a 20 year old man, and maybe even arguably a 40 year old man than a 30 or 20 year old man. Mm-hmm where it's a little bit different for women, right? Most men would say like, you know, women sure. women at the age of 20 are more attractive than they are at 30 or whatever. And there's, of course, exceptions to rule to everything. So I think in general, as men and at the, our age, um, you know, I think that I, st- or at least I feel like I'm still getting better with age yeah. right now. Like I, I you See, know, I, from, I, from, that, from that standpoint, but I, I fear the same thing that you guys fear, which is, I, I, you never know what, what could potentially happen, you know, with 10, 20 years to come. And my greatest fear 
is just getting something that I had no control over that keeps me from being able to be physical or moving because I'll do everything in my power to eat correctly, to train, to take care of myself, to make sure. Because my goal is to be 80, 90 years old and still a very physically active person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I want, I want to climb things and do and and accomplish you know physical feats in my 80s and potentially well, into my 90s. Well, it's interesting thinking about that too because like you mentioned like the really hard stuff like – so there has been a little bit of a shift, you know, because I used to really try to beat my body up and like really kill, you know, workouts and do all these things and like go for these sports that were super aggressive and physically taxing. And now it's in sparse. I'll do it in like sparse amounts just to maintain, you know, like I can I can take on these <clears throat> tackle these challenges. But like thinking about more longevity and like like I still want to incorporate, but I'm not like I'm not out there like pressing so hard that oh man i got injured again now i gotta recover and then do this whole thing uh and then this hurt now i'm going through this process again something you want to consider is that uh if you value growth which i think most people if you ask them if you ask them and you sit them down and you say okay do you do you like growing as a person do you like learning and uh and and growing into something you know better (coughs) i think most people would say yes uh without realizing that growth only comes from discomfort it only comes from challenge there is no growth in comfort, there is no growth in, you know, everything's great and I'm, you know, la di da. Otherwise, why would you grow? It comes from challenge. And, you know, looking ahead, you know, you can play, and this is a great thought game you can play with yourself, is you can imagine what would happen if I were immobile, you know, which could happen today. I could get in a car accident, I could lose my legs, or, you know, uh, you know, God forbid something happened to my, my, my spine, I'm paralyzed, whatever. I would have to make a choice at that point too. You know, I, what, what am I going to do now? Am I going to embrace it or am I going to fight something that I can't, you know, get rid of or change? And that's just really the, the, the mindset, I think, that the best mindset to be in. The other thing, too, is when I trained people, I used to love training older people because I identified really quick <clears throat> their, uh, their intelligence and their wisdom in the smallest ways. Now, this doesn't mean an older person is always going to be you know, a wiser, smarter person than a younger person. But an older person is typically a smarter, wiser person than their younger selves. And there's a lot of wisdom you can get from older people when you talk to them about certain things. Like you ask them about relationship advice or business advice or family or raising kids. Even though if you even though you may disagree with certain things, if you kind of pay attention, you're talking to somebody who's been on earth a lot longer than you. And I I don't know, I can't wait. Like I can't wait to see how I think and feel and do certain things with another 20 years under my belt. Like, what am I going to be talking about? Well, like, what can, are my ideas? You've got to be able to tell. I can already tell the difference in 25-year-old and 35-year-old me. Oh, huge. I mean, yeah. yeah. Right? I'm so, so much more mellow. Like, you just don't give a shit oh, yeah. as much as you did before, <laughs> right? Just stuff doesn't rile you up like it used to. And I think that... I think uh, this is something that was kind of cool. I used to always ask... Um, so I used to run boot camps all over San Jose. And I had you know, always 20, 30 people in classes and uh, mostly uh, middle-aged women. So I had, uh, and some men, but from the age of normally 40 all the way up to mid to late 60s. And I I used to ask this a lot. I used to love, like you, I used to love talking to these clients because there was always so much information to gain from all. And I had everything. I had from, you know, CEOs and tech people and construction people. I mean, you name the type of careers and entrepreneurs so just a, a wealth of knowledge to uh, to pick from. And I used to always ask them like, you know, hey, what's it like getting older? And, you know, does it do you remember what's your favorite year to be alive? Like and mm-hmm. thinking that they would be like, oh, my 30s were awesome or 20s were just great. And they all say now, you know, that no matter whether they, I was talking to the 67 year old or I was talking to the 50 year old or the 45 year old. Um, it was a common theme that everybody was like, life just keeps getting better, mm. you know, for what you think is going to be bad, like the physical things. Like, so the 25 year old mind, you know, at the guy asking this question at that time is freaking out. Cause I'm like, man, I don't want to lose my body and my looks and the thing, those are the things that consume you and think that is so important as you start to get older, that shit becomes less important. And the things that you value, like wisdom and knowledge experience, those things become more valuable and you start to realize that more of that comes with age and time, right? Because you create this ability, you create a passive income that allows you to travel more and do things like that. I mean, if you would have asked me, I remember being a young 20-year-old kid that was very ambitious and I wanted things. I wanted houses, cars, watches, toys. I wanted stuff. 
you know, and I ne- and I used to always think it was crazy people that wanted to travel. Like, why would you want to? Tra- what you spend ten thousand dollars? That's this much money towards a badass car. Or that ten thousand dollars, I can have this thing, right? And that stuff matter. It wasn't until I got older and I did more traveling and I settled down and then I started to appreciate those things. So with age, I believe we start to our our uh, our value system changes the things that we enjoy change well just you're you're just life experience man you're well, going to have challenges you're going to have good things happen you're going to have bad things happen yeah. and you and you learn and grow from them and that only comes with experience but it's easy to find people who freak out about aging it's yeah. easy to find people who don't want to age and they don't look very happy. I see them sometimes, especially around here. You know, well, we go you, down to L.A. You point this, well, you point this out. You, well, you point this out a lot, Sal. You talk about that's one of the scariest things about, um, you know, people in the, like, competing world or beauty pageants or models or celebrities. Yeah, you've identified, I mean, so much of your happiness has been surrounded around the way you look. Everyone's telling you how beautiful you are. Oh, you're so beautiful. You're so sexy. And photos of you all the time and staring at photos of yourself all the time. Like, you know, and then that eventually does go. And if that's all you've identified with for 10, 15 years of your life, those people have a really well, dude, hard time with I, that. I was watching. Uh, yeah, very hard. I was watching that HBO uh, documentary. Uh, what, what is it again? The Defiant Ones. Defiant Ones. And it was Stevie Nicks that they were interviewing? Yeah. Because uh, she used to date uh, Iovini. Mm-hmm. And um, when you see the camera come up close to her face and she's talking, wow, you could see all like the work that she's had done on her face. That moving. Yeah. And it just, and I've met celebrities in person. And for anyone's listening who's ever met a celebrity in person, who's identified with their youth and now is in their 50s or 60s, it doesn't It doesn't look good. You can see that these people are really trying to fight something yeah. that's inevitable. It's right. fucking crazy. It's going to happen. That's right. a tough place for them to be too because like they see all the work that they, they're not getting anymore, you know, yeah. and it's all based off of that. Like it's a very, it's a very shallow existence when that's like your goal is to like... Well, I just want to age. I just want to age. Uh, I just want to enjoy it. I want to age well. And the best way to do that is... By aging, by by living well now, really the difference between now you and- can look good, like yeah, old. It, 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 the healthier you look, that's the it. better you look. Just and healthy. That's just what it looks like. I love. I'll tell. And as far as being attractive, I'll tell you something right now. And I know you'll agree with me. I've seen women uh, in the gyms that I've managed who were in their fifties, fifties and sixties even, and these women were you can tell have had decades of fitness in their life. You know, and that's that's why they stand out because they're in the gym. They're in their 50s or 60s, but they've got good muscle, you know, shape. They've been lifting weights properly. They're very healthy. There was one woman in particular that worked out at Gold's that I used to go to, and she was 62, I believe, and she had long, she didn't dye her hair, so it was all pretty much gray, and she would kind of tie it up, and she'd work out with weights. And you could tell she looked really good for her age, but you could tell she didn't have any work or anything like that done. And she was a sexy fucking woman. Like, yeah. she was hot as hell. And the dudes in the gym, I remember seeing the young guys would kind of check her out. You know, sex appeal, uh, there's definitely a physical component that's objective, like the way you look. But there's that essence and that energy that you put out. And then mm-hmm. we've all experienced it oh, when you yeah. meet someone. It's the swag. And it's healthy. It's yeah. health. Like, healthy be healthy. Swag. And you're going to give off that appeal. Right. Quick commercial break, you guys. We keep getting asked all the time, how can I support the Mind Pump family? Here's one of the best ways you guys can. You guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have. Chimera Coffee with a K. You go to ChimeraCoffee.com. Put in the discount code Mind Pump for 10% at the checkout. If you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Next up is from Danielle CF2000. If you could go back in time, what would be the one piece of advice you would tell your prepubescent selves about fitness? We're getting real touchy feelings. Uh, prepubescent. Today. You, you know what? Sal picked the, the questions the today because he's all sick. Well, I read so, it by you. So, <laughs> so all these questions are Memories. all Memories. Like, right? Like yeah. feel, feel good yeah. questions. Uh, yeah, I would. It's good. Uh, it's good, man. I, I like think it. if, if I had, if I could go back in time and convince myself, because I'm a hard headed fucker. So I would be a tough, I think it would be tough to convince me, but maybe if I saw that it was me later on, yeah. be like, oh shit, he's from the future. Uh, okay. I would say, I would say, uh, don't take uh, any supplements um, because you're just wasting your money. Yeah. I would say, uh, train your full body three days a week, you know, stop the body part splits and don't force feed yourself uh, as much as you are because it's not benefiting you. Um, you're not gaining more muscle from it. Um, focus on real foods, and uh, you'll 
save yourself a lot of health problems <coughs> later on. Those are the three main things I think I would tell myself. I, I would definitely, uh, I would echo that for sure. I think I would tell myself the same thing and I would add in there uh, steroids because I, I did that in my early 20s. So I did, well, it wasn't pre pubescent though. That's the only thing. So if, if we're trying to go all the way back, way, way well, back. I, well, you guys didn't start till later anyway. Right. So, so that's, I just, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I didn't even start lifting until. Yeah, I was just playing sports really. So um, if if it's if I'm talking about when I first started working out and going back, I would I would tell myself to uh, to not do that. Um, I would probably educate myself on uh, the nutrition component better, mm-hmm. uh, have a better under full rounded uh, understanding of health and nutrition, um, and then I would probably tell myself to probably pace myself a little bit better. I think uh, as a young kid, when I first started working out, I was I was definitely somebody who was in the gym twice a day and hammering the weights like crazy and just in this stuck in this trap of, you know, I could just could not put weight and size on. And it was just the hardest thing in the world for me. And I struggled with that so much. And it was, I just had a lot. I was doing a lot. I couldn't eat enough. And that's also what led me towards the the steroid thing is because I thought that was the difference between me and everybody else that had gotten super ripped and buff. And uh, I would educate myself on that. I wish uh, Huey Lewis could, like, you know, do the, the song for this what, segment. Which song? <laughs> Gonna go back in time. Oh, yeah, there you go. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. yeah, that would be more epic. I don't know, like, I didn't work out till later. So, like, yeah, like 16, something like that, like, like you know, more resistance training wise. But um, as far as what I was doing, I definitely could have used a lot more structure um, with, you know, planning out the workouts and oh, what I was trying to accomplish. Uh, I didn't even put any thought in that direction. I was just trying to keep up with whoever was benching the most or whoever was like, that was like all I was f- like fascinated by. It was like, who's the strongest in like whatever particular lift it was. I didn't really educate myself as to how to incrementally, um, you know, overload and, and progressively get there. Um, it was more just like, ah, what can I lift today? And, um, so there wasn't a whole lot of thought process behind that. And also I think, um, yeah, definitely the nutrition side would have been a huge game changer if I would have, um, if I would have put any sort of attention in that direction. I remember just, (laughs) just going with whatever was popular at the time and, and throwing a ton of creatine, not even measuring it out in with all this protein powder and just like trying to load it with as much calories as possible to just, you know, throw this bomb into my stomach and gain weight. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's like I could, could have completely done it differently and then benefited more long-term. Maybe, you know, that could have been the start of my, you know, specific stomach problems and things like that. I could have avoided, um, you know, especially just the quality of food was just terrible. Like what I was putting into my body. I think that if I could change anything, it would have been just starting. Yeah. with, With quality foods and you know, whole natural organic foods back then. I had a go-to meal when I would, uh, let's see, by this time now, I'm probably 16, 17, and I would drive. No, well. Oh, my God. That was a a staple in my diet, I used to fuck those up. Bagel dogs, dude. Because they were low in fat, bro. They used to crush those. They were low in fat. They had protein. Anything (laughs) that had protein. They had protein. They were low in fat. (laughs) Well, I remember remember the day. I remember as a kid the day I discovered. Pepperoni. When I discovered peanuts had, had protein. I remember that. When I first discovered peanuts had protein, I was like, I'm going to eat a fucking jar of peanuts. Like anything that had protein, I would just eat a shit ton of. But my go-to meal, I'd drive to Hillsdale. This is before they moved the 24-hour fitness over there. I'd lift forever. I'd grab an American bodybuilding, uh, you know. Oh, sorry. I would drink a Blue Thunder before my workout because Blue Thunder had the most Blue Thunder ingredients. You guys remember Blue Thunder? ABB. No. ABB. Yeah, oh, it was ABB. It had the most ingredients. What I mean by that is I would grab it. I'd turn around on all the label. There was like... 50 different like anabolic <laughs> agents. Like, oh you know? my God, I'm yeah. going to get all those. I had Smilax. Remember Smilax? Smilax. That, was like a big su- that was a big supplement Smilax. back in the day. So I had all, everything in it. So that was my pre-workout. Yeah. Then after my workout, I would drink Amino, I think it was Amino 2050 which or, or 20, 2500, which meant it had 25 grams of protein. Yeah. And then I would pound that and then I'd drive to McDonald's <sighs> and I'd get a double quarter pound of a cheese meal. So it was a number four. I remember the name. Oh. Super size plus a 12 piece nugget oh. because I'm like, I want calories. Oh my God. And I mean, I had no, <clears throat> no concept of the, but I, I will, you know, I'm going to flip this on its head. Let me yeah. say, let me say some of the stuff I did right. Here's some, here's some of the stuff I did right. I trained my entire body from day one. 
which most kids I didn't. Most kids that's didn't. A, do that's that. a, you got you both did yeah. two things. You both said two things that I thought now listening to you talk. If I could go back, I for sure would. Programming. I was definitely the guy who was like muscle confusion. You know, like uh, I was, yeah. I was confusing the fuck out of my muscles. I was muscles. the PR chaser. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was out there confusing the fuck out of my muscles so much that they didn't want to grow. So, yeah. Yeah. so they were confused. They didn't know yeah, what to do. Yeah, they were confused. <laughs> they were confused as fuck. You know, which way do we go? So I would, I would definitely change that. Programming uh, was a huge deal. Once I finally put that piece together and understood the importance of that and kind of phasing in and out. Uh, that was a major, major game changer for me. Uh, what was the other one you just said? That was just. Uh, uh, well, I just trained my whole body. Oh yeah, and then I didn't do legs. I skipped mm-hmm. legs forever. For years. And then, and the main reason too was I actually went mechanically. I do squats, and my low back would just fucking kill me. So you're like, forget it. Yeah, yeah, and I would, and I would always come revisit it and try it, and then I'd be like, oh fuck. So I like I leg pressed and leg extension for like ten years of my life, yeah. like literally. Like that long. It was that long. And then it was like, okay, then I started, I, I got to do more for my legs. So then it was like all the machines plus lunges. That was actually my original leg routine or my, my first favorite leg routine was uh, <laughs> leg press, hack squat, leg extension, leg curl. That was it. I literally did that until uh, I worked out with a bunch of power lifters and did squats for the first time. And then it was, uh, I would do barbell squats or front squats and sissy squats, those were my, my and deadlifts. And then I started doing those. But I was already pretty young. I was, I was only 15, 15 or 16 when I started doing that. And I also identified weak body parts on myself and targeted the hell out of them. So I was a 15-year-old, 14-year-old kid doing rear laterals, <clears throat> uh, rear raises for the back of my shoulders. Like, you know, most kids wouldn't do that. You yeah. know what I mean? So those are some of the stuff I did right, but everything else is pretty much Some of the wrong. things I did good. If, if I were to say some of the things I did, what I did good was I hmm. definitely... Uh, because I was so muscle confusion based, I definitely trained in a lot of different modalities, uh, a lot of different planes. Like I was, in, I was in great shape. Like yeah. you, I could run with the, I could run with the best. I could jump with the best. I was decently strong. I wasn't the best at anything, but I was good at everything mm-hmm. because I trained like all different modalities. And and I could hang with you in a workout, like stamina wise, I was decently strong for my size. Like, so I did that pretty well, I think, uh, as a kid. I definitely stayed in programs too long because mm-hmm. I'd, I'd marry them. Mm-hmm. Like the first workouts I did were uh, kind of like Arnold Schwarzenegger <clears throat> style split, you know, routine because I had Arnold Schwarzenegger's encyclopedia. So that's the routine I followed. Then I switched to Mike Menser's heavy duty and boom, I built some muscle. So of course, what do you think happened? I married that, right? Yeah. And I stayed in that shit too long. And my body stopped responding. You know what else? And I just kept doing that. You know what else I did really well that, uh, and it reminds me now that I listen to, uh, Ben Pack a lot cause he preaches this like crazy. Um, I was very mechanically sound. Yeah. Like I, I was w- just going to say that I was super into mechanics. Like I was, uh, I'm bad. I used to pride myself on lifting next to some, you know, meathead guy that was swinging the weight around, and, and, I, was good. and I would grab like real lightweight and just be controlled and look oh, like yeah. perfect form, you know. So I took a lot of pride on form, mm-hmm. and and I used to never care about PRs. I used to never care about how much I was benching, squat, any of those movements. I was so mechanically driven, and I think that definitely set me up for a lot mm-hmm. later on to be successful. I little. think, yeah. So if I have to. I have to come up with something that I did do well. It was definitely master uh, the skill of squat and, and bench. And I actually did a decent job of just focusing on like power clean. Um, and I, I just never deadlifted. So I, I think that uh, obviously power clean, I get some form of that in there, but it's more of an explosive, uh, you know, complicated movement. But I, I like those were like my three that I was just like adamant about. Like it, to PR, you have to like really, um, you know, get in good with the mechanics of it and um, a master the skill of it. So I took that all the way from like early high school all throughout my college now was it because did you have a football coach that implemented that is Mm -hmm. that who taught you yeah Mm -hmm. that's originally who taught you did you guys get taught everything was revolved around those so you had your coach did you have anybody adam that kind of taught you anything wow that's boy you make me let me think here i'm trying to uh no dude we were very much so self-taught i was uh you know body for life and um you know muscle magazines mm-hmm. and yeah same here i didn't we have were, any. yeah we we it was my buddies and i in the garage man teaching each other 
yeah. teaching each other, bringing each other yeah. magazine articles. Oh, let's do this workout. Or yeah. like, oh, I saw this. Let's try that. Or I talked to the fucking supplement kid. Well, he was a man back then. The supplement man at the fucking, you know, protein store or whatever. And yeah. he's told us to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, it's literally like how we Actually, learned. my dad had a friend who used to compete. This was back then. So uh, he competed in the 80s or whatever. And he was a muscular dude. He was a chiropractor. And me and my cousin, I remember we were going to, uh, they were visiting and me and my cousin were super excited because we're these 15 year old kids who are trying to build muscle. And we knew this guy used to be a bodybuilder and he walked in and he was like the buffest dude at this point I had ever met. Um, and so we were super like, like nervous, like, but we want to ask him like, what are some secrets you could teach us? And I remember his advice, which was fucking great advice, but I thought he was bullshitting me. I asked him, I said, what is... Like, what can you tell us? We want to build mass. Like, our goal is to build some mass. And he says, here's what you do. He goes, eat real food, eat a lot of it, and li- train your whole body three days a week. And I remember we left. When he left that night, so me and my best cousin. Advice you can get, yeah. drops. Me and, me how, and my, old are, how old are you right here? Like 15. Wow. Yeah. Me and my cousin, was, great. Me and my cousin actually got an argument over it because when he left, we, he was like, well, maybe we should try it. And I'm like, no, he's obviously not telling us because we're kids. He thinks we're kids and we can't do it. And yeah. that's why he won't tell us. And, and we had this whole debate, like, was it true or was it not? And I'm like, none of the bodybuilding magazines say this. Like, they're telling me to take all these supplements and do all these other type of routines. It was, he was being honest. It was the best advice I could. I just didn't take it because I thought, oh, that's crazy. I thought I'm a kid. You know what I mean? Why would yeah. he tell me the truth? Fuck. See, <laughs> <laughs> you weren't ready to receive. Oh, Isn't that crazy? That yeah. is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Next question is from Sir Casey Bro. How would you train the public school system in health? Mm. Sir Bro. Boy, we need a whole overhauling. Oh, yeah. Dude, we do. We need a whole... Uh, first off, let's make it a priority. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know people have a concept of education and think, you know, they're there to learn, um, you know, important skills that are going to help them with their jobs in the future, like math and science in particular. Oh what good are your jobs if you can't fucking move? Well, yeah. I'm, I mean... <laughs> Take care of yourself. Here's the thing. Like, these are public schools that we're talking about, so we're paying for them with our tax dollars. Uh, we're we're going to go bankrupt because of our poor health. That's right. a fact. Like, well, that's what it's going to take for them to start making implementing these changes in this direction. Um, maybe. I hope so. Um, because this well, is the first place they cut aren't from Aren't there me. studies, too, right now that are out like to show like a... When a kid gets like 15 minutes of play every like hour or two, like their their ability to focus on something is like significantly higher. I mean, there's enough stuff out there to show the importance of the exercise and movement. Mm-hmm. And I think like as a kid, like that's I mean, if I had full control, right, like if money didn't matter and we could do whatever we wanted, I think I would definitely have. A, a classroom setting that would be even potentially outdoor and active and moving and with all different age groups. So mm-hmm. yeah. I definitely believe in the having, you know, kids that are five, six years older than the kids in the class, both, you know, so a wide range. And then there's physical activity built into the, the curriculum. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. literally like mathematics isn't just sitting and like writing math on the board. It's like going out and like adding things up. Yeah, well, like physically. combining it. So uh, like um, Dr. Ed Thomas, I always like kind of go back and see what he's doing because it's really interesting um, and in how he implements both together. Like, so it's not just like this clear division of like, hey, recess and now everybody plays and runs or whatever and they don't incorporate it. Uh, they, they basically sit all the rest of those hours, right? right. And so um, he actually like has scheduled breaks, like, you know, 10 minutes where everybody gets up and they do like calisthenics or they do things that requires like your joints to move in all directions. And uh, I mean, it's it's great because then the productivity goes way up. You know, the kids, uh, you know, retain a lot more of what they learn. Um, and it's just like it's and they stay in great shape and, and there's less absences. You know, there's just so many benefits to it. It's well, just they don't look at like, you know, all of that uh, as to what it could be. Well, you know? I mean, when you have a bunch of kids who are sitting in their desks and you're trying to teach them something, you're actually going to be more effective if you had them. Uh, like on the fl- like, okay, everybody get on the floor. We're gonna do these stretches while you're stretching. I'm gonna go over this and yeah, talk to you guys about this. this or whatever. And and yeah. then and then interact with them. Uh, it's actually uh, you, you retain things better that way. This is it's a trick that I do with my kids all the time. Yeah, it also gets them to stretch at the same time. But you know, this is interesting because the more schools have actually gotten in trouble for telling kids what's healthy to eat, what's not healthy to eat, because then kids go home and then their parents eat like shit. 
and they go, uh, oh, the parents don't like it. They don't like it. Yeah. Because you're Tough. telling my you're telling my <laughs> kid what I'm eating is not healthy. Oh, wow. You're telling my kid whatever, mm-hmm. and it's 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 an interesting situation to be in. Um, I definitely think uh, we should talk about health uh, with kids starting very young, mm-hmm. all the way up, and talk about all health, total health, mental health, physical health, emotional health. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know who to talk to when you feel a certain way. You know uh, why we eat healthy, not attach it to being fat or no. being thin, but attach it to our well-being. Uh, right. I, I like I like that mentality of, of adding in all these, um, you know, bullet points of like how much, you know, more productive they're going to be, how much more, the, you know, they're going to retain, you know, from, from whatever they're learning for the day and, um, you know, like all these different like sort of positives that we can – we can highlight and, and show just like do like start small, you know, start with like a 10, you know, five, 10 minute, you know, period where the whole class interacts and they do something physical and then go right back to work and see what happens. Yeah. And, and the other thing too is have you guys seen school lunches? Mm-mm. Oh, they're not now. They're, they're, they're terrible. They were terrible mm-hmm. back when I was they're, a kid. They're still terrible. Yeah. They're, they're absolutely fucking horrible. Yeah. It's like, Super unhealthy food yeah. that you that you give kids like you know nobody's innovated this no thing. and it's not it's like whatever, like if whatever it happened a, to uh, what was his name Jamie Baker Jamie he did the whole thing where he was trying to go travel all over the country was it the the uh, garden guy that was doing it the vertical walls he did no 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 he was this this guy was trying to just he was trying to bring awareness to childhood obesity and the problem in schools and oh, I know he did the whole demonstration yeah. of what a chicken nugget is actually made of in front of all the kids and so that and it was like gross i think he just pissed off <laughs> a lot of schools well i don't re- he was on it was it was Dude, a big deal when he did all this i don't some remember. of these food organizations yeah, i remember that these big food companies are some of the biggest donators to the school system. Yeah. They're some of the biggest ones and and they have partnerships like high schools will have like Taco craft. Bell. We'll have yeah. Taco Bell on campus yeah. or we'll have Pizza Hut on yeah. campus. We had Pizza Hut and Taco Bell on campus. That's right. Wow. Yeah. That's right. Soda machines. Yep. Soda machines, big money, you know, they, they all gather. every single day through high school, a soda and either Taco Bell or, or Pizza Hut was a staple you know, midday, midday meal for me at, and then candy. Mm-hmm. I'd eat candy in class and I would eat, I would eat Pizza Hut or Taco Bell with a soda. Yeah, that was what was on our campus. That was, that was the norm. Yes, and that right. was the good food because you could get like the cafeteria lunch, but that was like shit. <laughs> yeah. That looked like something they made a month ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. It was just terrible. So it was like, yeah, of course I'm going to get Taco Bell or freaking Pizza Hut. It's way better. Mm. Yeah. And it was like the same price. I was like, are you kidding me? It's fucking... <laughs> I'd rather have a five dollar burrito and, from Taco and Bell, and you though. couldn't get better advertising oh, for a right. company like those, like Taco Bell or whatever, because they're literally training you as a kid oh, yeah. to eat their food to make it in your mind feel like it's okay to eat this right. as a kid. Forming so that your, when you have forming kids, that palate, dude. Oh, yeah. oh it's yeah, fucking it's, terrible. It it is it is a uh, um, you know, and I think it's like it's, there's such this hard area, right? Because I feel like we we get we get on it so bad. It's like okay, eating Taco Bell once or twice is not going to kill That's you. It's a big wheel to turn, man. Yeah, this right. whole food it's, topic it's a, with schools. It's a monster yeah. one. I would I tell you what, I wouldn't want nothing to do with it. <laughs> oh man, lots be, of legislation. Yeah, I would be I bureaucracy. Would be, be too oh, afraid to, to tackle. And a lot it. of the and a, but a lot of people are kind of. How dope though would it be? They don't think part, about it. How dope would it be though if part of the school system or part of the school is they had their own like farm? Yeah, you grow your own food. Yes. Some schools are starting to do oh, that. I've Dude. heard about like yeah. some how initiatives. There. That yeah. would be cool yeah. because then like educating them on the food, there, like lots of science there, for, right? Yeah. And physical activity there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get out. We're gonna hoe the hoe it and get it all ready and mm-hmm. pick it and pull and it and prune it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, carrying the water over. Do I mean it could yeah. be? A, it could be. And that what's cool about that is it could be a class and physical activity at the same time. And it's applicable because then you can take it to your house, you know, and like have your own like and, uh, and, I, and you have pride and you have pride in your food. Yeah, and uh, you I, and I feel like you could educate uh, on the benefits of this whole natural food versus what you know they're selling at recess, you know, over there for whatever. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it, imagine if you're a teacher, yeah. right? You're sitting in class and you're going to talk about healthy food, and you're about to tell the kids. You know, Pizza Hut's unhealthy, and it's on the campus. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I know. Like, you, you might as a teach. That's a conflict of interest. They're just you know going mean? to kind of turn tune out. Now, let, me, let me ask you this. Well, uh, and then she's also eating it on our break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 kind of hard to do that. Justin, healthy kids. Justin, your your kids play sports too. Mm-hmm. 
Do you guys rotate who brings the snack for the kids after the game? Yes. Are you the uh, do Are you the one that brings the health? Because that's me. Yeah. You guys bring the, you guys bring well, the orange slices. <laughs> the orange slices. The other parents bring yeah, the, fucking, the fruit the fruit snacks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is frustrating because it'll be like um, yeah like popsicles or it'll be like rice krispie treats with all this like you know, or donuts like chocolates donuts yeah that's happened before dude it, when I was a kid it was orange slices. That's no, what we that got. was like as healthy as you got. That's what. That's all we got. Uh, it was horrible. Yeah. Our after game and and halftime game snacks were, you know, literally were orange slices. No, now now like my my daughter plays soccer. Her, she's over her her game's over. One of the other it's parents. Like, I give you about a kale. And I tell my <laughs> and and my kids know they know and I don't say anything because I don't want to like I said this is a, like a it's her game, you know I'll provide the healthy stuff they eat healthy most of the time and I don't want them to have a negative relationship. But they know because the parent will open the box. Oh, guys, come on over. And it's fucking donuts. Adult-sized donuts yeah. for these little eight-year-old kids. And they're grabbing it. And my daughter's looking okay. at me like, and I'm like, go ahead, honey. You can have it. And I'm yeah. thinking in my head like, you fucking, like, why would you bring yeah, they donuts? Gave, they gave them Oreos. Like, I was like, fucking Oreos? Yeah. Like, dude. And the kids are so excited. And, and like, what pisses me off the most really is Gatorade. Like, uh, like we're never gonna be sponsored by them. Fuck that company. Yeah. <laughs> like they made they made these shitty drinks that kids think are healthy. Yeah. Because and they're like just pure bullshit. Like bro, it's, Michael it's, Jordan used to drink it. Bro, it's water. fucking colored sugar water <laughs> bullshit. It's got electrolytes, dude. And like everybody brings it there thinking it's like, oh yeah, the kids need it. I'm like, yeah. no, they don't fucking need that. <laughs> every so time, every time you say electrolytes, I electrolytes. Can, it literally <laughs> puts peptides me, and electrolytes. It puts yeah. me back into that conversation when we yeah. were. Being being pitched that in day. Willow Glen. Oh, oh, I love that. Such a vivid uh, memory yeah. of like Listen, somebody. Have you guys, ever heard of electrolytes? <laughs> <laughs> and like we're like, <laughs> like holy no. shit, we're taking Dude, you this on is brand new territory. So you should see. Can't the, wait to tell our audience. You should see that. You should see my kids when it's my turn to bring the snacks. Oh no, my kids they will, dread it. They're both my kids will see me preparing something, or my daughter or my son if it's their game. Yeah, and then she'll look at me and be like. Are you bringing the snacks today? And I'll be like, and I'll be like, oh man, because yeah. they know it's gonna be like mozzarella sticks, fruit, you know, something yeah. healthy, and they yeah. know like. Oh. And then the kids when they come up after the game, and I open the bag. Here you go, guys. Yeah. Apples. I know. Enjoy your. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, yeah, and water. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. what's wrong with water? It's so crazy. Does, it tastes like nothing. <laughs> Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next question is from one rep at a time. What was an area of weakness you faced when building your brand? How did you overcome it? Would you consider it a strength now? Oh, I can, I can, Build, I know exactly building what our we do. brand. I know what we do. That, oh. that what our weaknesses uh, that that now we've worked on is we are all uh, visionaries. We're very, very mm. good at that. We love that. We could sit down and conceptualize and come up with great ideas and concepts, and we love doing that. Uh, organization is very difficult for us. It's very, very difficult. Um, and the way we've overcome it, or we're overcoming we've it, hired is people. we hire people to do that for <laughs> it us. It. Exactly. <laughs> Which it was a rough road to get there. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> definitely a rough road. But I mean, you, I mean, this, I mean, that's what you got to do, right? It, otherwise, we're going to focus on something that we suck at. And end up not doing what we're good at, which is the visionary part. But that's the first thing that comes into my head. I don't know about. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a, that's the, more business really, not brand. Like, so brand is. Are they talking about like us as far as like, they what probably we're mean? I or? think they even not want that. I think it's anything to do with the business. But what what, what what's a weakness in the business that when we first started? That's probably a strength now in the business. I mean, I could think of lots of little different ones. I mean, everything from uh, the facility that we're in right now. There's. When we when you first started, like we were having to go shoot at a different gym, and even before that, we didn't have that. We were we were recording in Doug's living room when it first started. So, the quality of everything that we that we do now is at a much higher level than what it was when we first started. So, mm -hmm. I th and I think it's a strength now. Uh, I think um, 
I've only been in one studio that I think is even comes close to the the level of ours, and that was a fucking t- television. It was Univision, U- Univision, right? You were gonna yeah. say Telemundo? Yeah, that Telemundo. was yeah. Yeah. Telemundo. Destinos. So uh, I think uh, I that the level of our operation now is. I, I used to say this, right? I used to tell I used to tell people that were close to me that uh, most companies today with social media do it the the fake it till you make it they pretend like they're a million dollar company but they're really they're really not we were the opposite like we we were even when we were uh starting to have success and doing better you would have never guessed because we weren't uh flaunting cars we weren't uh we weren't in a badass facility we weren't doing those things so i actually feel like we're finally we finally look like we actually are which is i i you know we are a legitimate business and company with employees and contractors and people that are working in the facility around the clock so uh i think that there's a lot of little stuff that's improved like that overall even just like if you talk about the brand in general um, you know, we've hired somebody now that uh, manages the IG page. Taylor does an incredible job with that and the YouTube. And so you can see that right now. I think I love the way the Instagram looks right now for the Mind Pump Media. I oh, really, he's done a great job. Yeah, yeah, I think it looks really professional. I think it looks cool. I think it definitely fits us. Oh, I got it. Go- we're, we're getting better at that. I, yeah. And I think, um, I think one of the things that maybe some people might have thought was a weakness was, um, you know, the way that we just, we we spit it out we spit it out unedited you know like the way that our delivery even with youtube and all these different things like we're just we're out there we have it already in our head and we kind of do it on the spot but we don't like clean it up you know like it's not like we we take that extra long time to really overly produce all this stuff and that's a good because it's become a part of our brand. it's it's our brand it's yeah. it's our brand and now we're like sort of you know cleaning up pieces of that so like along with what you're kind of saying as far as the look and aesthetic of what we're doing and everything is definitely improved um but that became like who we are Mm -hmm. you know and it's it's definitely working for us i got a good one uh when when we first started the show we did the first i don't know how many episodes we did uh, quite a few and we had never uh interviewed a single guest Mm -hmm. we did most of them oh yeah where it was just me adam and justin and we have really good chemistry with the three of us. And when we first did interviews, it took us a while before we got comfortable uh, doing interviews yeah, we, because we hated them. We hated doing them. The episodes suck. It, it sucked. They weren't. They didn't to a well. point where we actually considered at one point never doing them never again. doing interviews. Again. It was because we yeah. had a new person in the room, and we all of a sudden our chemistry was off. And now we're just like three people trying to do this robotic thing of interviewing or whatever. Yeah. And that took a while. It took some practice before we start to, started to feel good. And now I think we're pretty good at it. I think we do a good no, job. That is probably honestly that is probably the best one you analogy you can give is because w- one of the most common things that we get complimented on when people leave the show, and that I, in my at least for me, that's been probably one of the coolest things as far as receiving a compliment is uh, when people come take do, uh, get on the show as far as an interview, and we're talking about bigger name people that have been on. Joe Rogan's and bigger shows and stuff like that have told us afterwards that this was the best interview I've ever had. Mm-hmm. People love the conversation style of interview that we do. It's very different than anybody else. It took I, us a while to figure that out. To I mean, what we literally did was we just said, "Hey, you know what? They're coming in to our chemistry. Yeah, let's just include them we in have that. To remain true. And th- and then it just it, what happens is the person and this is usually how it breaks down. We like to meet with people before we record a podcast very rarely will they come in and then right away we record we'll hang out with them and initially you can you can tell they're like they can feel it and they're trying to kind of get into it and then they relax and it's like we're all hanging out and then the interviews get a lot better that's that's probably the best example no because it, it was we well give, right? it is the best example because it was for sure a weakness yeah we all hated it all right. we all said it was terrible yeah and it has probably become a staple like it's definitely a strength of ours now that it, to the point where people compliment us that oh my god that was the coolest or the best interview i've ever been a part of so i think that's a, a for sure one as far as other stuff you my know, my Instagram's gotten a lot better. It ain't great, but it's gotten a lot better. <laughs> it was all selfies. <laughs> I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. You know what I mean? When I first started, I had no idea what you do on this fucking site called Instagram. Yeah, That's- I think you're. Wa- <laughs> I got a trophy for mine, so it was pretty cool. <laughs> what, what do you hear? Uh, we, uh, I think 
the the whole all of that's coming together right now too. So actually, I think an area that's gonna be a strength of ours. Um, and again, we hired uh, we hired out here. So we worked really hard at the very beginning, not really concerned or worried about what other people thought of us or the image we were putting out there. If we looked big enough, like none of us gave a shit about that. We had other things to worry about. And now that we're in a position where we can afford to hire people to help us, we are now finding the right people that complement the business. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, uh, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening right now in the next like 90 days, January, quarter one. We're of getting next, a facelift. Yeah, we are big time. So the whole, I mean, the complete website's getting changed. Sal already revamped the nutrition guy, which is coming out again. Like a lot of cool stuff is is coming down uh, down the pipeline that I think is going to be a strength of ours because um, we really haven't, we haven't done any marketing, which is crazy. To cra- It's crazy to think that this business is where it's at with zero dollars really well other than the, the porn few, ads. Yeah, instead of the porn Damn ad and it. a few <laughs> Instagram celebrities we tried. It's a black eye. But ass. for the most part, we haven't spent any money in that direction and we are we're heavily vested in that direction now and it's all getting put together. And so it'll be interesting to see it all unfold. And I do believe that um, we have found the right companies, the right teams to affiliate with. And I'm really excited because I think it's going to be a major strength of ours. And I, and I can't wait till we get to a point where we can just start, like we've talked so much about going on the road and visiting gyms and visiting Ooh, you know, in our format. I would love, I, I can't wait for that. Our intros. Oh, and, oh yeah. So much and like just the way the shows evolved. Like I listened to some of our older ones and uh, I, I do think that we've started to kind of hone in on uh, sure. the format. So for sure. I wanted to add that. Excellent. Yeah. Check it out. Go to YouTube, Mind Pump TV. That's our channel. We post a new video every single day. I'm ordering you to subscribe. Also, if you go to mindpumpmedia.com, you can register for 30 days of coaching. It's totally free. It's lots of great information we've put together uh, for our audience. It costs you nothing. Go to mindpumpmedia.com and register. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.